to it. Actually, asking you what are the roots of nine? The square the roots of nine. Oh, I'm gonna do the square roots. Shit, yeah. <laughs> we on to another we are section. Done with that last chapter. It's like you want to see me cry. <laughs> I I gotta make a distinction for you because the square root symbol is a very specific question, guys. Um. So what do I square to get 9? 3, negative 3. So if they ask you a question, I think in the book they'll exactly say, find all of its square roots. That sounds weird. But without a symbol, that means anything squared makes this number. So it's always going to be positive something, negative something. Can you make it plus or minus 3? Sort of, yes. Yes, that's fine. Um, so what do you square? What are the all square roots? Of, let's see, uh, 144. Yeah, 12 and negative 12. Uh, what about zero? Zero. 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 What do you square to get zero? zero? Zero. So it's the only number that's only got one answer. Now, right now, the answer to this next one is it's not real. What do you square to get negative four? Some of you guys might know. It's not negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Can you square any real number and get a negative answer? No. 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 You can't multiply a real number by itself. Get a negative. Some of you guys might know there are things that are not considered to be a part of the set we call real numbers, which so desperately sucks. It's the worst name ever come up with is the name imaginary, because then that just feeds right into everybody's, like, yeah, I knew it. It's all made up bullshit. <laughs> but I'm going to show you, when we get to that section with uh, complex numbers, well, I'll show you a really kick-ass video that does a great job of showing you a lot of stuff. You, even if you know complex, you've never seen some of the shit in the video about what it really is. Anyway, we'll talk about when we get there. Right now, you just say not real. If you put down the right answer with the, with the complex stuff, I'm not going to mark it wrong, but you don't have to know that stuff yet. This is section 10.1. 10.1. How are we doing so far? All right. What's up? What have I done that's weird? If you don't have to worry about the complex stuff, that's in the future. Don't worry about it right now. So besides that, <coughs> complex numbers have imaginary and real parts. Don't get into it. We're not there yet. Okay. Are you okay besides that? How, how, did you, how did you not get an answer for negative 4 again? What real number do you multiply by itself to get negative 4? Give me an answer. A negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. Ain't no way. Yeah, it's going to involve I stuff. But let's not bring that in yet. So we don't need. We don't officially need to know complex numbers yet. Imaginary numbers. Same with like a negative sixteen. Any negative number has no real root, real square root. All right, how are we doing so far? That's the weirdest part yet. Everything else should be simple. All right, now, let me, let me bring in the symbol that we all know and discuss what the question asks. Are you cool with every number except zero, every, every positive number, has two square roots? Yeah. 
but the symbol we use specifically asks for the positive one. So when I write square root of 9, that is asking for the positive. How do I know it's asking for the positive one? Because what sign is on it? Positive. That doesn't show up. So the square root of 9 is 3, period. Don't start putting both answers and saying, well, Jeff told me it's this now, and math changes day to day. No, math never changes. It just learns new shit. So what if I wanted the negative answer? Well, I just put a negative on it. What's the negative square root of 9? Negative. negative 3. That's how you get both. You have to ask for the positive one and ask for the negative one. What does that symbol really, really mean? <coughs> what does it take two of to multiply by this? And the positive answer for that. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. And just to get a little ahead, what would this symbol then mean? What does it take three of? to multiply to be 27. It takes three threes, right? Three times three times three. Are you guys with me? Not nine. I'm not saying what does it take three of to add to be 27. That's what division means. You guys realize that? 27 divided by three means what does it take three of to add to be 27? Nine. That's why the answer is nine. Nine plus nine plus nine is 27. This symbol means what does it take three of to multiply to be 27? That's three. You guys... This idea of understanding the question a symbol is asking you so they can translate it to English better. I don't have, you, you kind of have this in your head already. It's only if you know two languages, you don't have to stop and think, how do you say chair again? You know, me, I got to go, how do you say table in Spanish? Oh, shit. Um, but I, I, you guys look at the symbol and you start doing stuff because you've already got it translated. It's like you know this, this word in math. You know what it means. Right? And now I just want to make sure you understand I can just put whatever number I want there and it means the same basic thing. So here, what is there an understood number? Two. Two. Yes. So you should know at least up to 12 all the squares. Right? What's 11 squared? 121. That's the poor little dude that's often forgotten. Everybody knows 10 squared. Everybody knows 7 squared. But 11 squared is like, oh. Anybody know 13 squared? 16 to 9. I like it. I'll take this away. Quick little thing about the squares. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 16, 25, 36. Real quick. Real side note. Side note. How far apart are these? Do you understand? <coughs> All the squares are separated by the odd numbers. Isn't that neat? You're like, whatever. Did that make it? Was this fighting words, really? It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> you like, keep that shit away from me. What is that? Math voodoo <laughs> shit. Um, so let's see. Uh, so if I ask you this question, it should be quick. What's the square root of negative 16? Four. Four uh, times four is no, it's negative are, 16. Not, not real. Not real. We officially at the moment cannot do square roots because we're only using real numbers. We're not using all the, the actual numbers that exist. Just because we call them not real doesn't mean they don't exist. It's just a poor choice. Do you know when we first came up with the negative numbers? People were like, what? what? That's bullshit. There are no, what are you talking about, negative? How could you have negative apples? What kind of bullshit? So they called those imaginary. But thankfully, we changed that word to the negatives because now we know, hey, I got negative. Look at my bank account, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, we can have negative. Look at my debt. <laughs> Holy shit. I owe you money. That's negative shit. Yes, with me? There are physical reasons for negatives. There are also physical interpretations of what we call the imaginary numbers. I will show you those. Blow your mind a little bit, and then you'll be fine. So 
So this does, this is not real. That's what you see, say when you say, see this. Good Lord, Jeff. How is that a tongue twister? That's what you say when you see this. What about this, though? Yes, negative four. I like it. Sweet. So here, let me, let me, really blow your mind here. What, what is, what is this? Think before you speak. Can't be X, because what could X be? X could be negative. And the output for a square root is never negative. Ah, hey, there it is. It's the absolute value of X. Let's try it. So a square root, are you guys cool with the fact that a square root cannot come out negative? Is that cool? You understand that? Okay, good. Now watch. If x is negative 3, what's negative 3 squared? 9. And what's the square root of 9? 3. How does that relate to what was in there? It's the absolute value of it, isn't it? So what do we do in math very often when I know the answer can't be negative, I put the damn thing in absolute value. So we should, of course I do. Because what's the absolute value do? Make sure the damn thing's positive. So you know that's not negative because it's to the second power? Yeah, if you square this first, the negative goes away and then you get a positive well, no, answer. I mean like with x, like if you have like that problem specifically, you know that it's not negative because, like the final it's not going to be negative because it's to the second power? Because, because it's a square root. The output for a square root cannot be negative because by definition it means the positive root. Are you guys cool with that, what I just said? The square root's output can't be negative. You guys cool with that? You got it. You got it. I love you guys so much. Uh, what do I put inside there to get a one out? <coughs> one, right? What I put inside there to get a two out? Four. What I put inside there to get a zero out? Zero. What I put inside there to get an 81? Nine. 81 squared. Nasi. No. Got anything? What? 81 squared. Oh, sorry. That was evil. <laughs> what I put in there to get a nine out? Let me say that. Let me. 81. What do I put inside there to get a negative 3 out? For sure, guys. No, square root of negative 9 is not real. Um, Can you put anything outside, in there? Huh? The negative mark outside. Ah, no, no, no. See, it's not there. I can't, you can't change. I'm saying, what do you put inside of a square root to make a negative output? You can't. Therefore, if you guys get what I just said, then you're not freaked out that the output can't be negative. The output can't be negative. We know that. You know that fundamentally. You just don't think about it when you see this shit. Right? And when I write this, people don't stop to think that could be a negative number, couldn't it? I don't care that it has no negative on it. What could X be? Anything. Like negative 3. So the answer can't be X because that could be negative. And as you know, the output can't be negative. Now it's not negative. And if you try some examples out, you see that, yeah, doing this is a shortcut kind of way to get the answer. Just kill the square and take the absolute value of what that is. So for, like, the last one you wrote, that would just be, like, not real? Yeah, no, uh, undefined. Not, yeah. It's not not real, to be honest. It's undefined. There's nothing defined to do this. Yes? Why don't you just, like, kill the square and then just take the... And then take the absolute value of this. Okay. Yeah. So what's the square root of 11, negative 11.42 squared? Uh, square root of 11.42 squared. 11.42 squared. 11.42 squared. Yes, the square root the square cancel, but you better do the absolute value yeah. so the answer is not negative. If I did square this, I don't want to. Do you want to square this? No, especially if I don't want to use calculator. You don't want to square this shit. If I did, though, wouldn't it become positive? 
So if I kill the square root with the square, why does that make sense? The square root does the opposite thing that the square does. So they kill each other. They are inverse functions. They will kill each other. But square roots can't come out negative. That's what the absolute value saves our ass. Right? So the answer here would be the absolute value of this, which is positive 11.14. Yes, sir. Where does the absolute value come from? Where does it come from? Or how does that fit into the actual number? It's because the answer has to be positive, oh, okay. but the square root does kill the square. So how do I ensure the answer that's left is positive? Absolute value. That's what the absolute value's job is. Whatever you put in it makes it positive, right? So this is one place where it just directly, oh, that's my job, I got you. <laughs> I'm supposed to make this thing positive. When you work though, you need to show the absolute value step. Just when we get to uh, solving equations with radicals in it, I'll show you a nice way to do it uh, more directly. Okay. We'll get there. All right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me make sure I get all the little parts in this. 10 1 is not overly taxing, shouldn't be. Let's try some other stuff here. You guys help me out. You guys do this. This is really going to help you out later, too. Um, fill that in for me. Try to do it without a cap. See how far you can get. So all you're doing is like one cubed is one, one. two cubed is eight. eight. That should be familiar from difference in sum of cubes. Right, you break eight up into twos, right? Three cubed is twenty-seven. Four cubed sixty-four. Five cubed Six cubed twenty-sixteen. Two sixty-nine. So if I ask you what is the cube root of one hundred twenty-five? What's the cube root of 125? Uh, five. five, because it takes three fives to multiply to be 125. That's the question that the symbol is asking. Sorry. What if they were all, what if this was all, has everybody got this? Is that cool? Yeah. What if these are all negative? Then, what's negative one cubed? Negative. Three negatives. These two can't, oh wait, these two can't. <laughs> <laughs> So all these are just going to be negative because they're going to have one negative left over, right? So odd powers maintain the sign. Even powers don't. That's why even roots freak out when there's a negative input. What is square root of a negative number? Not real. Holy shit. The fourth root of a negative number is even worse. But if I ask you what's the cube root of negative 64, What is that? What is the three up to multiply with negative 64? Negative 4. It's fine. It's not not real. <laughs> you guys see why even roots freak out? Because if you have any even number of numbers, whatever sign they have, it's going to come out to be positive. Two negatives would kill each other. Four negatives would pair off and kill each other. But if I have something to a fifth power and it's negative, these two kill each other, it's still negative. See? So the fifth powers and odd powers maintain the sign. So odd roots won't freak out. For negatives. Does that make sense? So like, so this is negative 4. So it's so a cube root of negative 8 would just be 3. Negative 2. Negative 2. So you do the 8, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and then you put a negative on it. Is it very cool? Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 is 16. See, every 
even one I do comes out positive. Of course it does, because all the negatives are going to kill each other. That's why even roots cannot handle negative inputs, but odd roots totally can. All right, all right, so watch this. Let me make sure if I'm doing this too early. Blah, 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 who cares? Got to do the, eventually. <coughs> domain, domain means what? X. What about X? Domain doesn't just mean X. Domain means... No. Domain means all the X values I'm allowed to use. What am I allowed to put in for X? What kind of numbers? What do they have to be? Positive. That's a positive or? Even. Even negative? Or zero. Or a little zero, dude. It's not negative or positive. What's the square root of zero? Zero. Zero. Does everybody cool that? What kind of number can I put in here that you can actually do? It just can't be negative. Remember that we were doing earlier? What's the square root of negative 4? All we can say at the moment is not real. Is that a, or an answer? No. I, so it's really another way of saying I don't have a freaking clue. I just know it, it ain't none of the numbers we know. You guys aren't with me? So what's got to be true about the inside then if it can't be negative? Well, it has to be at least 0. Right? So the inside, we say it like just the inside of the root has to be at least zero. So why am I saying it like that? Because the way to find domain of any function is to say in English what must happen and then write down what you just said in mathish. So do you remember doing these? Oh uh, yeah. One over and just let's do this. What's the domain of this one? How do you figure it out? Some of you guys are just going to give me the number, but how do you actually write down something to work with? What, what can't happen? The bottom, oh here, let's say in English, the bottom can't be zero. So how do I write that in mathish? What's the bottom? X plus one can't be, can't equal zero. And then I solve. X can't be negative 1. So whenever I ask you a domain question, you say in English what the problem is, and then write what you just said in mathish. So for this one, what about, so here's f of x, blah, blah, blah. What about if I have this one? What's the domain of square root of 2x minus 6? So in English, what's the, the issue? Inside has to be at least 0. So now I'll write that in mathish. What's the inside? What's the inside? 2x minus 6. That's the inside has to be at least, oh shit. How do you write at least in mathish? What symbol is that? Uh, greater, than greater than or equal to? Yeah. Zero. The inside can't be negative is another way to say that, right? Inside has to be at least zero. Does everybody see what I'm saying? Domain is awesome. You just have to say what the problem would be and then write what you just said as an equation or an inequality. It's too much. That's too good to believe. That's how every domain question can be done. If they give you a function, that's how you can answer it. Say in English what the problem could be and then write that what you just said as an equation. Uh, and to solve this, you add 6 and divide by 2. You eventually get that. How do you check this? Well, what's not greater than or equal to 3? 2. If I put a 2 in there, can I do it? 2 times 2 is 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Oh, shit. Can't handle some negative. You see that? That's how you can kind of check to make sure the answer makes sense. You good? I love you guys. Huh? No, that's not sarcasm. Jeez. <laughs> I hate you guys. Go to hell. No, I mean, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'm sure you've had that teachers that you thought they, they, they hate everybody. Um, okay. What's up? You good? Okay. So let me see. What about this one? You guys do this one. 
find the domain of square root of 7 minus x. He set up this guy. All right, you can subtract seven. Negative x squared equal to negative seven. Divide by negative one. Good, less than or equal to. So, the sign's got to flip when you divide or multiply by negative. Again, I don't care where the inequality came from, I don't care what you already did to it. If you divide and multiply by negative, that sign's got to flip. Period. Why? Because. So that's the answer for that guy. And if I wanted you to, you could put it into interval notation, right? And graph it and all that. What about this guy? Anybody realize that this requires no work at all? Who has the issue? What kind of roots have a problem somewhere? Uh, even roots. This is an even root. No. no, it's a key root. It can handle negatives on the inside. There is no issue then. So this domain is all real numbers. R or all real numbers. Or negative infinity to infinity. Do you guys see that? Even roots have an issue because when you square something, you lose information about whether it's positive or negative. Odd roots don't have that issue. We, j we did the cube root of negative 8 earlier, didn't we? D didn't we? Yes. So it can handle negative inputs. Odd roots can. Even roots can't. Yes? So if you had the domain of an even square and an even inside, it would also be all real numbers? I wouldn't do that many levels to you, okay. right? That gets a little bit like a, almost a trick question, but yeah, if it was the square root of x squared, then the domain would be all real numbers because the square would make it not negative anymore, right? Yeah. Yes? So if it was an even um, root or something, it always has to be like greater than or equal to zero? Yeah, it's got to be, yeah, that's where it starts off. Mm -hmm. If there's a even root, the domain is going to be smaller than all real numbers, right? More than likely. If it's an odd root, it's got no issues. Now, a little side note. Let me see if you guys get this. Is everybody decent with that? You guys see that? Yeah. So if this was an 11th root, the same answer. If this was an 80th root, same answer. It's just the fact that it's even or odd that tells me what the issue could be. No issue with odds. This kind of issue with evens. So what's the domain of this? Except now the root has no problems, right? The root's like you can be whatever you want to in the inside as long as you're a number. Because at one, this is undefined. So the only time that an odd root would have a problem is if the thing on the inside had a problem. You see, the, the root has no problem. But this dude can't let x be 1. So everybody see it, just to show you the possibility of an evil kind of question. Right? The root says everything's cool, but the inside says, oh, shit, x can't be 1. So that would be the domain, everything except 1. Not because of the root, because that stupid dude right there. He messed everybody up. So going back to the third one, the, the 5x plus 11. Yes. So if that was 5x plus 13, it would still be the same. Totally. Answer, all real numbers. 5x plus 41. Yeah. That's because the cube root can handle negatives and positives and zeros. So what's that leave out? Nothing. It can handle everything. Okay. Even roots cannot handle negatives. So therefore, the inside must be at least zero. That leads to me having to cut numbers out. Gotcha. I like it. 
So if I wrote square root and I said, what can you put inside here? You'd say, well, as long as it's not negative, we well, can do that, right? If I put a cube root and I said, what can you put in there? You're like, anything. I could put negative 27. I could positive 64. I could put zero. Whatever shit I want to in there. So, if you put 5x plus 1, x could not equal... No, 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 no. If I made that a 1 right there on this problem, same answer because it's a cube root. Cube roots can handle negatives and positives and zero. What's the domain of this? All real numbers. Because who cares what A is? Who cares what B is? It's going to be negative or positive or zero, and they can handle all of those. The odd roots can handle negatives. We know this. Do you see how that's related to why I can't do a difference of squares, but I can do it, I mean, sum of squares, but I can do a difference or sum of cubes? So what if it was AX minus B? Same thing, because B could be negative. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but if I said the square root of AX plus B, oh shit, I gotta do this kind of thing, because square roots can't handle negatives. I can't let the thing on the inside be negative because it's an even root. If it's an odd root, the inside could be negative or positive or zero, it doesn't matter. I could do odd roots of anything. That's, that's all that says. Okay. Oh, okay, here, all right. Um, make uh, x, y plane. Make an XY table. What did we say the domain of this one was again? The Y equals square root of X? What's the domain? No, not what's. It's not square root of X squared. Oh. Just what's the domain of square root of X? X has to be. Greater than zero. Greater than or equal to zero. So what's the first number I would put in my table? Zero. See, that's why we ask you to figure out the domain. Very often we say find the domain and then make an XY table because then you know where the shit to start if you figure out the domain. Am I going to put a negative 9 here? No, of course I'm not. It's not going to get anything. So I would use 0. I would use 1. Would you use 2? No. What's the square root of 2? 1.414, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to graph that. <coughs> What's the next number you would use? <coughs> Why would you use four? The square root of four is. All right, now finish that out, graph it. Do it. You can do it. Oh, totally. In fact, we're going to do that later. Square root of zero is zero. Square root of one is one. Square root of four is two. two. Square root of nine would be three. Okay, just I don't want to go that far, but still. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So square root of zero is zero. Square root of one is one. Square root of four is two. Square root of nine would be three. So it kind of gives me an idea of the fact that it's going to grow. Very slowly, slowly grow. What does that look like fell over? It looks, if I do this, what does that look like half of? Yeah, it's missing the bottom half because the square root is the positive root. So it's missing all the negative roots. So if I put the negative roots in also, it would have a complete parabola that fell over. Why does it make sense? Because the square root of x is related to 
x squared. So the graph should have something similar to x. Here's x squared. It's a parabola. And it fell over and lost its bottom half and went, oh, and, you know, that's like a really weird knife. <laughs> right? All right. Is that, so you got to know the look of a square root function. There it is. That's what a square root function will look like. I can move it around and shit, but it's going to have that shape, that schwa. Okay. okay, I like it. Um, here, all right. Let's do the next level of just by hand shit. See if you guys can put some stuff together from earlier. What's the square root of 36a squared? Almost 6a, not quite. It's definitely not over a. It's it's sort of 6a, but well, there's one thing missing. Because what could a be? Oh, uh, plus or minus. Not plus or minus, because again, the answer to a square root cannot be negative. Yeah, absolutely. So see how plus or minus kind of goes against that? The answer can't be negative, so you need absolute value around that. Why do I not have to put it around six? Because six is freaking positive. So would you say six is the absolute value of a? Six times the absolute value of a. Not to that, because then it would be a power, and that would really get freaky. Because you don't know what it is. Yeah, we don't know what A is. And if I put plus or minus, that's exactly the opposite of what I'm trying to be careful about. The answer can't be negative. So is that what you would do? Take Yeah, exactly. So those kill each other, but the absolute value is just there to cover our ass for if it's negative. All right. So what about this one? Uh, square root of 49b to the fourth. Stay with me now. What's a square root do to something? It cuts it in <coughs> half. And so this is exactly like differences of squares, right? So cut this in half. Seven, Seven times absolute value of b squared. And why do I not need an absolute value of this one? Oh, you're going to, you're like, oh, come on, what the shit? Because if b is real, b squared can't be. Negative. Now, if you put an absolute value, I'm not going to take the points off because it's the same answer. But do you, guys, do you guys see that little detail? I don't need an absolute value here because can b squared be negative? Can b squared be negative? No. Can b squared be negative? No. That's why you don't need an absolute value around it because it's, I already know it's positive. Is that, does that make sense? I desperately love you guys so much. I, I, the output to a square root can't be negative. So whatever I write there, if it could be negative, I put that sucker in absolute values to cover my ass for maybe it's negative. I don't know shit. I don't know what A is. But B squared, whatever the freak B is, B squared is positive. Because we're not using imaginary numbers yet. And again, if you do this, I'm not going to take points off. I'm just going to put a little note. You don't need these. Not a big deal. The more important thing is just seeing what this thing does. So what do you think about this here then? What's the cube root of x to the ninth power? X to the third. Guess what's the cube root due to something? Cuts it in thirds, right? It takes one of them. So what? Three goes into nine three times. Holy shit. Does everybody hear what I just said? A cube root cuts something in thirds. Well, how do you cut nine in thirds? You divide by three, don't you? So there's a beautiful shortcut there. All right, so let me... There are ants all over the place in this one. Yay. Let's see, four. What is the eighth root of uh, A to the 16th, B to the 24th, C to the 88th? <gasps> Right. A, 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 yeah, a squared. B to the third. B to the third. C to the eleventh. Eleventh. And here's right. A goes into sixteen twice. What's a cube root do to something? Cuts it in thirds. What's an a three do to something? Cuts it's it in eighths. So I didn't do anything different than what we just did here. One tiny little thing. Why do I not have to worry about absolute values here at all? Because it's a odd root. You know what? 
what could be negative up here is these two things. So, listen to me, listen. Eventually, in the homework, very soon after you start chapter 10, they're going to say, assume all, they're going to use a word, radic hands, meaning all the shit inside the radical were made from positive numbers. What they're saying is, good God, there's enough shit to worry about. Don't worry about the absolute values. You see what I'm saying? So they're going to say here, assume everything inside is positive, so you don't have to worry about absolute values. There's enough other shit to worry about. You'll see that in the instructions. Does everybody see what happened here? Do you guys see that? Please tell me you do, because it just kicks so much ass. So what's this? Um, fourth root of 16m4 uh, d12. So two. two, good, right? Because 4 through to 16 is 2. Yeah. 2, 4 times is 16. M. Mm. Yeah. One. And D to the third. third. And again, that would say, assume everything's positive in there. You gotta love that shit, right? Please. Please. Why do I do, well, oh my god. Why did I do 4 <laughs> into 16 like I did 4 into 12? My answer would be, there is no 12 in there. There is no 12 in there anywhere. Nowhere is there a 12 in there. There are 12 Ds. Yeah. And this big string that I just condensed. So, of course, exponents will be treated differently than actual numbers, because they're different things, right? How do I write 16 as a power? 16 is 2 to the what power? Fourth root. I mean, the fourth power, right? So if I wrote it like that, I would treat it the same way. 16, let me write it. 16 is 2 to the 4 power. Are you guys cool with that? And this is M4, D, 12. 4 goes into 4. Once. Once. See, I mean, if I write it in the same form, then the thing will treat it the same way. Is this written in exponential form right now? No. So I don't do 4 into 16. That makes any damn sense. If I make it an exponent, then I can divide because that's how it treats exponents. So no math doesn't do different shit whenever it feels like it. So if you feel like that's what's going on ever, you got to come see me, because it's not true. If they didn't say assume all of our Then you have to worry about uh, absolute values. Then, for example, here, this would have to be in absolute values, because it could be negative. And this was a fourth root, right? Okay, okay, I like it. Okay. So, I think I'll do one more thing, and then I'm going to let you guys try something out here. Well, this is kind of a big thing, though. I kind of built up to this. It shouldn't be a big surprise. <clears throat> to be completely honest, if I had been around when they invented root notation, I would have told them, stop that shit. Don't do that shit. There's a much better notation than that. And you're all like, I understand, Roots. What the hell's your problem? Another way to write uh, the square root of something. And remind me, for example, what's the square root of 9? Three. 3. Because it cuts 9 in half multiplicatively. When I say cut it in half, nobody's thinking 4.5, are they? Right, because that's nine divided by two, but that's obviously not what I mean. I mean, cut it in half multiplicatively. What thing is based on multiplication? Exponents. So another way to write this is b to the one half. A one half power means I have <coughs> half of that thing multiplicative. Isn't that what a square root means? Square root of nine is three because half of nine multiplicatively is three. So how would you rewrite a cube root? It'd be a what power? One third. Do you see how roots are on the bottom in the fraction, just like on plants, they're on the bottom? Nobody come at me with tuber. Well, tubers, Jeff, are actually roots on the bottom. Screw it. Most plants, roots are on the bottom, right? So that's how I remember. So how would I rewrite the cube root of x? It would be x to the one third. Let me show you how this, this kind of makes some good sense. If I look at this problem, square root of 9 is 9 to the 1 half. Is that, is that cool? That's, that square root is a 1 half power. 
How do I rewrite 9? 3 to the second. What do I do with powers like this when they're like this? What do I do with those powers? Multiply them. What's 1 half times 2? What's a half of 2? 1. Square root of 9 is 3. I mean, that's... We don't need square root notation because a, a, a fractional power is already doing what it wants to do. <laughs> All right, so now watch. Is that just a side note or is that actually... No, 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 no. That's the entire point of a section here. This is something you've got to desperately know. That I can rewrite a root as a fractional power. They're the same thing. So let's, let's kind of up it up a little bit. Um, what if I, so if I had the fifth root of x squared, let me see if you guys can figure that. Watch this, this is kind of nifty. Wouldn't this be x squared, that thing, to the what power for the fifth root? One fifth power, is that cool? What's the fifth root do to something? Cuts it in one fifths. So it's a one fifth power. Again, what do I do with these? So it's two fifths. So it's a shortcut. The root goes on the bottom like on most plants, and the power is powerful, so it rises to the freaking top. That's how I rewrite it in fractional notation. Okay, continuing. Keep going. Um, Remind me that here, here's an easy one. Please do that. X to the ninth. Yeah, not 14. That's crazy. There's no two. There's no seven. There are nine X's in a row. Two X's, seven more X's, nine freaking X's. Cool? All right. So what's X to the one-fifth times X to the four-thirds? And nobody better say five-eighths. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. What do you do with the powers? You add them. How do you add fractions? LCD. So the, the property doesn't change anything. It doesn't give a shit what's up there. If you have x to something times x to something, you add those things. And then we go, that's oh, fractions. Oh, okay, I've got to get an LCD to be able to add them. You can't suddenly just go 5 eighths because the property wants me to put them together. No, we know how to add fractions. Shit. So this will be x to the one-fifth plus four-thirds. Now I can just focus on that problem, right? What's the LCD? 15. 15. Multiplied by 3. Multiplied by 5. 23 over 15. That's nothing new, by the way. We already know to add powers. Just because they're fractions, who gives a shit? We know how to add fractions. So what would you do with this one here? This whole 10 no, we we bled over into 10 too now. Okay. Uh, again, the, the property of math, the properties of math don't give a shit what's there. The property says when I have a base to a power divided by the same base to a power, what do you do with the powers? Subtract them. We know this. You know this. Don't let the fact that fractions interrupt you, your process. You subtract the damn things, whatever they are. So then you can rewrite this as m to the 3 eighths minus 1 twelfths, and you can focus your attention on the actual problem. Use the property, bam. And now I go, as the human, now i got to figure this shit out. Math goes, yep. <laughs> right? So what's the LCD between these two? 24. Multiply this by 3. Multiply this by 2. 9 minus 2, 7 24. So, even if you haven't totally bought into what I said earlier about the roots being a stupid way to do things, it doesn't mean you don't have to know it. <laughs> if 
by the way. It exists. It's out there. It's too bad. If I could go back in time, I would have. I, but I can't, so there. we got to know how to do it. Um, how would I do this freaky-ass problem? See, the root notation sucks. So my, my suggestion here, my, my hint is, rewrite this the other way. How do you rewrite fifth root of a cubed to be a to the three fifths? And a fourth root of a would be a to the? Now you see what to do, right? Now they're just powers. We already have properties of powers. I don't want to make a whole slew of properties of roots. No, they're the same as powers. So, of course, here you just have to get an LCD, Adam. Yep. Times 4 times 4 times 5 times 5. So, you get 12 plus 5? Yep. 17 twentieths. What's the matter? Is everybody cool? Oh, it's just LCD is 20, right? Even if you can't read this, it doesn't matter because you know how to get an LCD. That needs a 4, that needs a 5. So how is that? I was in last us. What happened? Because it started off in root notation, you had to know to make it into exponential notation so you could do this. This notation, I can't do shit. Okay? Now, now notice, the roots here are different, right? What if they were the same roots? Is there something simpler I could do? So if I had, for example, um, the cube root of, of x times the cube root of, of uh, x squared. So this would be, if I rewrote it like this, x to the one-third times x to the two-thirds is x to the three-thirds is just x, right? Three over three is one. 